Hello everyone, it's Sam again, and I'm hosting the section. So next question, Thai account one of our team senior member will present you with the process automation in Power Query and with Power Automate and VBA. And this section can help you automate a lot of process uh, during your work. Um, please enjoy the video. Hello everyone, welcome to Excel for Truly Global. My name is Talia Gao. My Vietnamese name is Gang of the L. I'm a senior analyst of Sun Products Sydney team. English is not my first language, but I will try my best to speak clearly. I have a background in accounting, and as you may know, accountants usually deal with repetitive manual tasks every day. That's why I enjoy finding opportunities to automate processes. I also developed my interest in analyzing data and solving complex Excel problems. In my current role, I have my client build financial and data model, automate business processes, transform and visualizing data using Excel, Power ABI, and sometimes Power Automate. I'm also in charge of the final Friday fix and Monday morning mailing block series on some product website where I cover Excel challenges and issues. As I mentioned, I like automating things. So today I'm going to talk about how to automate a cost registration process using Power Query, Power Automate, and VBA. Okay, now let's get started. The topic I'm going to talk about is process automation with Power Query, Power Automate, and VBA. My contact details are on the slide. Please feel free to reach out via LinkedIn or email. To ensure the quality of the presentation, I recorded this video a few days before the event. However, if you have any questions, please leave them in the Q&A box. I will answer them at the end of the session. You can also share your favorite automation tools or experience in the chat box. Now, I would like to start with the problem of the case studies to identify opportunities for improvement. In the current process, there are two main platforms as shown on the screen. The first one is registration platform. This is a third-party service that we use. The second one is our online training website called Early Bird. There is no connection between these two platforms. These are our new students, and this is me or an admin person who is in charge of this process. The student first registers on the registration platform. This platform will then send an email to notify me of any new registrations. My first task is to copy and paste the student details to an Excel file. Next, I will save this as a CSV file and import it into our online training website to create new accounts for the students. Then I need to send email to students to provide them the login details. Finally, the students can use their accounts to log in into the training website and take the courses. As you can see, there are a lot of manual steps in this process. Next, I will automate these gray manual tasks. Firstly, when I receive a new registration email in Outlook, I will use Power Query in Excel to extract student details and load them into Excel. Secondly, I will create a macro button to export CSV file for later uploading. Next, I will use a Power Automate plug to send emails to students. Actually, we can use VBA to send emails, but VBA will block our computer while running, while Power Automate will run in the cloud without affecting our work. And finally, I will add two macro buttons to refresh the query and trigger the flow. Sounds a good plan. This slide summarizes all steps that I'm going to take today. Before jumping into automating things, we need to prepare the Excel scoopbook to make it dynamic, easy to follow and adjust in the future, that is, creating parameters and name ranges. Let's move on to our demo. Here is the starting file that I have prepared. It is currently an XLSX file. This file has two tabs, parameters 
and user import. In the first tab, I have some of the parameters here that I will use later in the queries of VBA. The first parameters is user import folder path. I add a name range for it as folder path. This folder contains all of the CSV export file later. The second parameter is passwords. Similarly, I have name range. This is the passwords of the new accounts. The third one is date, which has a formula equal to date and a name range date. The fourth one is last time stamp. It is the last time that we create new accounts. The name range is timestamp. The last one is new registration. This is the new student accounts to create. And the next part is the table that contains all of the courses that we provide to our students. The table name is LU underscore course. On the second tab, we have a table called data. This table is the format that we want for the CSV file. Column E is user's pass, which is equal to the name range password on the parameter tabs, which is this one. On column F, we have the order date, which is the text format of the date. As you may know, CSV automatically converts all date format from DDMMYYYY to the US date format, which is date after the month. So in our region, this is 1st of October 2022. So this formula is just to make sure that the date is in the text format. As you can see, I use different colors in this file. They are the cell style here on the home tab. We use this cell style in most of our model with clients to distinguish between assumption, parameters, constraint, etc. Now let's come to the next step. On the screen is my main Outlook email. And when I scroll down, I have a secondary email here, which is a demo registration, where I receive all of the email for the new registration notification. They all have the same structure like this. Now I will use Power Query to connect to this email. Before connecting to the Outlook email, I would like to pull some of the parameters into Power Query. The first one is timestamp. Select this cells, go to data tab from table or range. I remove this change type step because I do not need it now. And then go to transform tab, replace values. I want to replace none with zero. Okay. Now I change the type to date time. And then I right click at this cell, drill down to get the value. And then I go to back to file tab, close and load to. Only create connection and OK. Next, I would like to pull this table into Power Query and similarly go to data tab from table or range. And now we have this table in Power Query. And close and load to. Only create connection. OK. Next, I will connect to the Outlook email. On the data tab, get data from other sources and from Microsoft Exchange. I will then type in my email address that I showed you before, the most registration at someproduct.com and click OK. You may be asked to verify your authentication of the email. You can just simply use your email login or Microsoft account login to verify. Now I select 
the EL table here and transform data. I would like to remove some column because there are too many columns here. I was under home tab, I will click choose columns. And the two columns that I need are data receipt and body. Okay. Now I filter this column data filters after I select a date here to make Power Query to create an MCO for me. And on the formula bar, I replace this part with my timestamp that I created before. OK. And then I span this column. I only need this text column and this one. OK. Now I have all of the email here with all the detail that I need. I will need to get the first name, last name, email address, and the course name. I will select this column, text body, go to add column tab, extract text between delimiters. I would like to get the first name. It would be between the first name and the last name. Then OK. I will change the name of this column directly from the formula bar to avoid adding new step. So this one will be first name. Enter. And similarly, I will continue to extract text between the limiters. Now I would like to extract the last name, which is after the last name and before the email address. OK. Similarly, I will change the name here directly from the formula bar. Last name, enter. And next, I like to extract the email address. Email address. We should between email address and company. OK. And I change the name here on the formula bar. When I look at the email, it also contains this component. Uh, I just want to extract the email before it. So I select the email address column, go to transform, extract text before the delimiters, type in the delimiters. Okay, now I got the correct email. Next, I reselect this text body and continue to extract the course name, which is between the title and the date. Okay. Oops, something wrong with my course name. It seems that in the text body column, there are two titles. One here and one here. So, no problem. I will go into the cop of the step. Under advanced option, I change this one to one to make it skip one. Okay. Now I got the correct name here. Similarly, I will change the name on the, on the back to cost. And now I got all the information that I need. I will select these four columns and then go to Transform tab, Format, Trim to remove extra spaces from this text. And next, Format, Clean to clean all the line breaks and some non-printable characters from the text. And then I change the name of this date time receipt to date receipt. Now, I need to standardize this course name to the course name that we have here in the LU course table. To do that, I need to add a custom column 
called cos2 and the formula we import here is table dot select rows be careful power query is case sensitive the table i want to do the filters is lu underscore cost tab enter to go to a new line the second argument of this function is a condition i will add my condition here text dot contents open bracket and the first text is this cost column and the second text the substring is a column from the lookup cost which is cost name close bracket close bracket however power query cannot distinguish between the cost column here in the current table and the cost column here in the LU cost table. So I will add a function before it with the R between the brackets and equal greater than symbols. And then I will add a letter R here. That means for each row of the lookup cost table, I will check whether the cost name column of this lookup table is a substring of this cost column. And then I will click OK. It will generate a table here for each row. I will expand this column and select both of those columns. Now we got all the cost name correctly. Now I just need to select the column that I need. First name, last name, email address, cost name and cost ID. And then I right click, remove other column. I would like to rearrange this one, this cost ID before the cost name. And then I select all by using Ctrl A shortcut key. Go to transform tab, detect data type, and change this date to date. Place current. And now I just need to change the name of this query to registrations and go to file, close and load to. I want to close to a table in a new worksheet. Okay. Now I have all of the data that I need for the emails and the CSV upload file later. Let's move on to the next step. In the third section, we used Power Automate to send the login details to our students. Let's go to Power Automate. Remember to save your file before we continue with Power Automate. The homepage of Power Automate is powerautomate.microsoft.com You can just simply sign in using your Microsoft account. Because I have already signed in, so it didn't ask me for the login detail. And then I click Create. I would like to create an instant cloud flow. On the right hand side, you can select any trigger that you like for your flow. For this case study, I will select the one at the bottom, 
when an HTTP request is received, click Create. And then under the Show Advanced Options of this step, I would like to select the Get Request. And I will add a new step. The first step is List Rows sent in a table. And I will select this one. The location is in some product team. SharePoint folder and then the document SharePoint library. And the file is within tally folder which is registration model version TC. The table I would like to take is the registration table, which is the output of the Power Query. And then I'll add another step. I will need to specify an expiry date of the accounts, so I need to use a convert time zone step this one the base time to convert uh, in this field I will type in an expression get future time tab and I want to add one year to the date to the current date which is today so I will type year here then I click OK, it will add a dynamic content here for me. The time zone of Power Automate time is the UTC time. And my current location is Sydney. The format string that I use is And then next step, check, okay. The next step, I would like to embed a picture within the email. That is the logo under my signature. So I will get my content. And I will use this SharePoint one. The site address will be some product team and the location is within my folder. Some product local. And now I come to the next step. I would like to find the combo step. This is a variable that we can use in the email content later. So I will copy and paste the image tab. Next, I will create a step to send email. this version 2. Under the 2 part, I click Add Dynamic Content. I will take the email address that I have in the table as I declare above. Power Automate automatically add a loop for this step because there are many email address here. Under the subject, I would like to have the course name Course registration detail. Under the body, I will just copy the one that I have in my template and paste it into the body here. And I just replace this one with my tab, my dynamic content tab. 
this one is cost name be careful oops training email again and the date is the date that we already converted above that is the expiry date and now at the bottom I will I want to add my signature to do that I will have to change this to the HTML view using this button I will then need to copy a code from my signature Outlook email. Now let's move to Outlook. This is the email that I sent to myself. And after that, I just right click as this email and view source. And then I copy Ctrl A, Ctrl C to copy all this code. And close this one and go back to my power. Ultimate flow and Ctrl B here. So these are the code I need for my signature. And then I need to replace an image tag with the tag that I created above. So I will replace this one with the output here that I created above. And now I got my email, the flow, the flow is completed. Now I just click save. And change the name to send registration details. EBG 2022, click save again. I go back to the first step to copy the HTTP request URL. Then I will use this in a macro button later. In this final part, I'm going to show you how to create macro buttons to refresh the queries, copy your data from query outputs to the CSV template, export the tab as a CSV file, and finally, trigger a flow to send email to the students. Now I'm back at my Excel file. First, I would like to change the color of this table. Under Table Design tab, I change the color to green to make it easier to look. And then I go back to the Parameter tabs, add a folders in cell C7 equal pound total and select this email column so this is the numbers of new registration that we have now next I will save this file as an SLSM workbook so that I can record the macro later and save Because we have changed the name of the file, we need to go back into the flow to change a few steps. So under this step, as you can see, we have a high code file here. Where I go to my folder again to find the file. Unfortunately, the XLSM file does not exist in this folder. So what I need to do is to insert a step above it. Get file meta data. And now I go to my folder again. So now I can select this XLSM file here. And then I will come back to this step. Instead of selecting a file here, I will add a dynamic content here with the ID. 
and the table is not correct anymore and there's no drop down as well so I need to manually type in the table name enter custom value yep and now I can save the flow and come back now I come back to Excel file Let's go into the Visual Basic application. Under the Developer tab, click Visual Basic. Before creating a new macro, I will change all of these sheet names to a user-friendly name. This one will be Parameters. This one will be Registration. And this one will be users import and then I right click insert module now I will start writing my first macro this macro is update data the first step is to refresh all query The syntax is active workbook dot refresh all. Next, I will hard code the current timestamp by re referring to the name range that we have created on a parameters tab called timestamp. equal now which is the current time and then I need to delete all rows in data table this is the table in the CSV template first I declare a variable called tbl which is a table as an op list object and I set tbl equal the table on users import tab list objects table called data now I will delete the rows from the table on user import tab from row 3 because I want to keep the header rows of the table and the first row so that we can keep the formula till the last row which is table dot range dot rows dot count dot entire row dot delete The next step is to copy the data from registration to user import tab registrations dot range. I will go back to our um, Excel file and then select the range from first name column to cost ID so that I can copy this address. Escape and then go back to this window. Open bracket, open double quote, close double quotes, close bracket. Dot copy, and then I replace this range at cells A2 of the user import tab, which is just below the headers. Place specials, place Excel, place values only. I forgot the dot here. And then application dot cut copy mode equal force to remove the copy mode. 
And last step is to save the workbook. Active workbook dot save. And to make this macro a bit faster, I will add a row called application dot screen updating equals false to turn off the screen updating. And then I will turn it on back again at here. Okay, now let's try running this macro. I will add a button by going to the developer tab, insert button. And I will assign the update data macro into this person. Rename it as update and run it. There's an error. I will go back into the macros because the VBA code keeps running without waiting for the query to complete. So I will turn on the query and connections pane here and change the property of this registration query. Untick enable background refresh. Okay, this will ensure that the VBA macro will run after the query has finished refreshing. Okay, now I will click update again. Now it works perfectly. Now I just need to edit the format of this button by right clicking it. Both. Now let's move on to the second macro. I will go back into the VBA window by pressing Alt F11. Right click at the module here, insert module. Now I will add another sub called Export CSV. And first I will turn off some of the application. First one will be display alert equals false applications dot screen updating equal false and then I would declare variable first one is folder path and string the second variable is export date as date for the pass is equal to parameters dot range for the path name range dot value and I want to add a backslash characters at the end of this parameters export date equal parameters dot range date name range dot value next I will export user import tab to CSV file user import dot copy active workbook dot save as by name equal for for the underscore path and user import dot name which is the name of the user import tab and a space and format of the export date in yyyy dash fm dash d 
in five format is Excel CSV. And then I will close this new workbook. And just for this one is optional. So I will generate a message box to notify that this macro is done. And then I copy the application above to the bottom and turn them back on. Before we start running this macro, um, I don't want this macro to run when there is no new registration. So I want to add an if statement around this block if parameters dot range new registrations dot value higher than zero then this block else message box there is no new registration and if all right now the second macro is ready i just right click at this button ctrl c ctrl v and change the name here export csv and then right click at this button again assign macro assign export csv macro and then i will click the button as this one is zero so i will just remove this timestamp here and update again now we have four here and then i click export csv again now let's go to the window explode in this users import folder we have a newly created CSV file here, which includes four new registrations, which is perfect. Now come back to the Excel file. We will start building the third macro. Okay, on F11, right click add module, insert module. Due to the time limitation, I will copy the code that I have written before and explain the step for you. In this macro send emails, the first step is to double check whether there's any new registration. Otherwise, there will be a message box to notify. And the second step is to save the workbook and then wait for five seconds. The reason for it is because the SharePoint only refresh five seconds every time. And then I will run the flow by declaring the HTTP URL that I have copied from the flow previously. And next is trigger the URL. So I have four options here and then I will explain the disadvantage and advantage of each of these options. The first option is to simply use activebookbook.follow hyperlink. However, sometimes the flows is triggered multiple times using this option. I'm not sure if these issues have been resolved or not, but when I Google it, this is the issues that many people has come across similar to mine. Therefore, I will not use this option. The second option is to use the Internet Explorer dot application. This is a syntax valid in VBA. So in this option, the Internet Explorer is open and then navigate to this URL. And we have a waiting time of one second here. And after that, the browser will be closed. So now I will test 
with this option first. I will close this window and then hit send email to test. Emails have been sent. Okay, now I go to my Outlook to double check. Here I have received the email and when I go to the send item, all of the false email have been sent successfully. Okay, now I will go back to the EBA window. If you are afraid that the Internet Explorer will not work in the future, you may not want to use this option. So I will comment this block. Under option 3, I use a shell command with a non-default browser. So in this case, because my computer only have two browsers, which is Internet Explorer and Microsoft Edge, so I cannot test with Chrome or Firefox. You can change this part to your own non-default browsers here. The first sales commands will open the Internet Explorer with this URL, and then there's a waiting time of one second, and the next shell command will close the Internet Explorer browser. Now let's test with this option. I'll click send emails again. Okay, now I'll go to Outlook again. Yep, here are the four news email that has been sent. Okay, now I'll go back to VBA. Let me comment this block. And then I will go to option 4. Option 4 is a bit similar. So the first step is to start a default browser. Now I, because I don't specify any browser here, it will open the URL in a default browser. And then there's a waiting time of one second again. And next one, I will send a key here. This means control W, which is closing the tab. And now let's test. Again, an email. And go to Alu. Here are the news emails that have just been sent. Here's other three emails for three options that I have just used. So now, that's it for all of the three buttons. Now the model is complete. Let's come to this conclusion. So I have improved our registration process using this automated model. However, it is not 100% automated. We still need a person to click the button and upload the CSV file to our training website. But it does have reduced significant time on manual steps. The purpose of this presentation is to inspire you with some ideas of improving your work productivity. To summarize, I have a table here outlining some functions in Excel and Power Automate that I use in the demo. So we have gone through four main steps for the preparation of parameters to connecting to Outlook email by Power Query and using Power Automate to send emails and finally exporting CSV files and connecting to other parts of the module with VBA macro buttons. Hope you find something useful from this presentation. I'm Talia Pell. If you have any questions, please leave them in the Q&A box. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of the event. Hi, Talia Pell. Yeah. Hello, Sam. How are you? Uh, I'm fine. Thank you. Um, so there's some Q&A question lying around for you right now. Are you ready to answer them? Yeah, sure. So what the R uh, larger ego do in the query you use? Is it a loop? Does it mean the row one in table A we read on the row in table two? Yeah, uh, in order to explain it, I will share my screen.
Can you see my screen now? Yes, yes. Yep, so let me go into the query data tab, get data, launch Power Query Editor. And in the, I think what you meant is this step, the edit cost to step. So in this step, I use the R here with the equal and lateral sign. This means this is a function in query. So query, how query cannot distinguish between the cost column and the cost name here. That's why I need to add a function here so to show to show that for each row within the lookup cost table, which is this lookup table, how query will check whether the current cost column in this current table. So I will scroll to the left. So this column, whether this column, each row of this column is an each here. It will check whether each row of this cost column contains the cost name column of this lookup cost table. So this function is just to distinguish between these two columns. Hope this makes sense. Hey, yes, this certainly is. Um, there's another question for you. Um, so can you share with us what the source for learning Power Query, VBA and Power Automate that you use? Yep, sure. So the first source should be our event, Excel Virtually Global 2022. Uh, you can learn a lot from many sessions from uh, Excel and Power BI experts around the world. Or you can go to our YouTube channel, Some Products, and watch the last year's session in the playlist. We also have a website, uh, someproducts.com, where you can go to the Talk tab and search for series. It includes many series here like Power BI, Power BI, Power Query, VBA for you to learn all of these tools. I personally in charge of this uh, Final Friday Fix and Monday Morning Morning, which is the Excel challenge, challenge series. You can also practice these challenges uh, to improve your Excel skills. And the another main source is YouTube, of course. I usually learn how to automate by just uh, type in the keyword here and find the videos about it. As for the Power Query, I mainly learn from Goodly channel. And I also read blogs of Ben Ribado, as well as Enterprise DNA. As for the VBA, um, DT Nguyen Học Excel Online is my first teacher in VBA. So this is just for Vietnamese. You can also search for his playlist in VBA here. Or if you are an English speaker, you may search for the Excel Macro Mastery of Paul Kelly. He's a master in, Excel, uh, in VBA. Another source is the Reddit community, Excel community here. You can post your questions or look at the question and try to answer the question to improve your Excel skills. And we also have the uh, Discord Excel user community created by Tim, our director in some product. Yeah, you can post your questions here and other people will come and answer your questions yep that's all well that's quite a lot of library you have there yeah i will send the link in the q a box for you yeah thanks no problem
Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us and uh, enjoy the rest of the event.